Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. This is Pharma Talk with Dorono, the platform where we discuss everything pharmacy. I hope we're all staying safe and I want to believe we're all following the COVID-19 protocols. Wash your hands properly and put on your face mask when you go out to meet people in public places. Having said that, today's episode of Pharma Talk, we are going to go practical. Yes, we're going practical today. What I mean is, um, I'm going to be demonstrating to us how to make our powder for suspensions. So if you are a mother, if you are a father, if you are a caregiver out there, and at one point or the other, you have the need or you've had the need to make a powder for suspension for your child or for yourself, this video is going to show you how to make that. Stay glued to your screen and watch out. Make your powder for suspension. First, you need the powder for suspension to be made. So this is our powder for suspension. And then you need your water. Water is water at room temperature or boiled and cooled water. So if you cannot go through the process of boiling your water or keeping it cool, all you can do is just get a bottled water at room temperature and then you get your powder for suspension. First thing first, first you shake the powder to loosen it. This way won't go around, so you have to apply another force. And then you shake. When you feel the powder moving completely, your powder is now completely um, loosened. You keep now look at the difference between this point this is the base of the powder and this is the mark where you're supposed to fill the water to one major mistake a lot of people make is pouring all of the content straight down to the markup and when you do this you will not end up getting the right concentration it's either the concentration you give to your child is reduced which is a low dose or it's more, it's more concentrated which could be a high dose so you do not want to give an underdose or an overdose of a medication so here is what you have to do first off you look at the mark here this is the base of the powder and this is the mark where we're supposed to um, fill the water to you don't pour the entire water into the bottle directly you have to look at look at the point here and the point here Pick half the distance between this place and this point. So you pour our water. We're going to pour our water halfway at this point. Halfway. Notice where the water is right now. The water is at this point, which is halfway between the markup line and then the base of the powder. We're going to cap our powder. The bottle and then we shake so some persons will ask you is it okay to shake this way or it's better to shake this way either ways you go is still fine if you decide to go this way or you go this way, it's fine. The most important thing is for the water to penetrate a lot of uh, the powder. So, if you notice, the volume of the entire powder has now reduced. We were at this point while we were adding the water. But upon adding the water, it has dissolved or better still penetrated the powder and the volume has reduced. It is now here. So you can imagine if you had poured your powder, your water to this point and then you had given it to your child, it would have been um, a concentrated powder being formed. And at this point, your child is going to be re receiving an overdose. So for every 5 mil you give your child, it's probably giving your child over um 250 milligram for just five meals so you see the importance of making sure that your powder is well spaced so our volume is now here so we start adding water bit 
by bit so we we'll add here again halfway we cap and then we shake we cap and we shake for some powders in the process of shaking you notice the formation of some bubbles at the top of the powder so you allow it to stand and allow the bubbles to disappear I can still see some of the bubbles so you allow your bubbles to disappear entirely before you add the final volume so now I can notice now there's no more bubble so we can now add our remaining volume to this mark shaking you see some bubbles still formed you allow the bubbles to disappear completely from this video you can see the bubbles allow the bubbles to disappear completely and then you can now give your child five meals of this will now contain 250 milligram of amoxif saline clavulanic acid what is the best storage condition after giving my child where do i keep it now some studies have shown that when powders or better still suspensions are kept in the refrigerator at a temperature of two to eight degrees the potency or better still the the strength or the concentration of that product is retained as against keeping at room temperature which is prone to temperature fluctuations or temperature changes so next time you make your powder for suspensions you can read through the leaflets written in the uh, medication and check out if it is okay for you to store in the refrigerator or it is okay for you to keep it at room temperature so people I hope you enjoyed this video. Next week, we're going to be back with another educating and interesting episode of the program. Do take care of yourself and see you.